So this video is about the new uh, software update for Sony cameras like FX30 and FX3. I have the FX30, so I'll be commenting only on that. Currently we are at version 2.0 and in order to get that, you have to update from the version 1.05. It won't work otherwise. The update is very straightforward. You just put the file on the root of your SD card and follow the instructions. Now, there are a few options that we have uh, now uh, compared to what we had before. And for small YouTubers like me and you, probably they are not very important, but they are important if you want to take this camera to the next level and make it or consider it a real cinema camera. Anyway, let's see. Some of the updates uh, are going to be in a very strange location area. So, for example, the first update, you're going to find it on page 47 out of 53. And this matters uh, if you have an uh, anamorphic lens. So, as you can see, now we have a, an option to de-squeeze the display at 1.3 or 2.0. Uh, this doesn't really matter because you don't have anamorphic lenses and the most affordable anamorphic lenses are probably from Siri and they come uh, with a different aspect ratio so you need something like 1.6 or 1.8 two point my understanding it goes if you buy an extra adapter so yeah for YouTube you can probably forget about it if I'm not wrong the next update you can find it here in uh, to the file settings which is page 6 out of 53 very well hidden and if you go to file settings now you can ID your camera the real number and the camera position um, those are very nice obviously if you have multiple cameras like FX3 and FX30 and probably FX6 and FX9 but again for small youtubers you probably have one FX3 or FX30, so I don't see how difficult it is to memorize which camera is this. It's the one that is filming you, most likely. So, again, doesn't really help us on this platform. But, obviously, I can see the usefulness if you are shooting in a professional environment. We'll move on. The third update that I consider somehow important is the one regarding the dial customize. And I'm talking about page 44 out of 53. If you go into custom key dial setting, uh, for example, now, believe it or not, you can assign, where is it? We can assign the movie and um, SNQ select to one of the uh, buttons that we desire. Why is this important? Because before that, in order to access the SNQ uh, mode, you have to press the mode button and select it from here, which takes a few steps. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but then again, that's what it is. So now you can assign it to a button and, you know, it will be easier for you. In, in my opinion, the last update because I'm not talking about that phone application uh, thingy that I don't use. I Maybe it has some uses for some of the uh, videographers out there, certainly not for me, is the fact that now we can shoot in 4K DCI. 4K DCI is a little bit larger then Ultra HD, and I'm talking about the horizontal axis, and which now stands for 40 something over 2160. So that's that's a that's an improvement. We are talking only about 256 uh, pixels. But what is also nice is that the moment you you select this option, and now you can go here and actually set your camera to 24p instead of 23.9. And that's huge. That's huge for people that are uh, 
doing cinema because sure they can now use these cameras a B cam for other real cinema cameras uh, there is not much of a difference uh, in YouTube and social media and I'll explain why but once you you do that uh, you also be able to select the shutter speed uh, at uh, in 180 degree rule and that will be uh, 1 over 48 instead of 1 over 50. I'm not going to do that because camera will need to reboot in order for that to happen so yeah you've seen it in other people's videos but that's uh, that's another thing that you can take into consideration now what I'm trying to say about this this update that uh, involves basically 4k DCI is that I have seen on a lot of forums and other YouTube videos like for some reason people are expecting that the field of view uh, will be wider when they are shooting in uh, 4k DCI compared to uh, Ultra HD unfortunately this doesn't happen with uh, FX3 and FX30 because this sensor that is in size has already an aspect ratio of 3 to 2 and the longest horizontal axis is already at its widest so adding extra resolution there is not going to make the image wider it's just going to give you more pixels but if you take this image further and you put it in a non-linear editor like uh, da vinci for example you're going to see that you can shift the image a little bit on the horizontal axis left and right and that can be useful if you want to to reframe your shot other than that what you're going to get uh, shooting in 4k uh, dci here on this platform like youtube obviously you're going to downscale back to ultra hd and you can pretend that the image is a little bit sharper than before but probably is not not so i wouldn't bother with these updates uh, for uh, social media platforms it's good that they are there obviously those cameras like fx3 and fx 30 are not necessarily made for youtubers they are also made for, for real filmmakers so yes you can uh, obviously take advantage of that but uh, here on this social media platform it's not necessarily a huge improvement and another thing that i want to say about this is uh, simply the fact that even if you shoot in true 24p the, the vast majority of displays are still at 60 hertz so you're still going to get the same 3 to 2 pull down while if you are shooting for cinema you can project your masterpiece on the cinema screen and you can set the projector to have a pull down of 2 to 2 which is probably most common but you're not going to get the same luxury on common displays and mobile phones that are still running at 60 hertz so i don't really see the benefit but obviously the biggest benefit is in the real cinema world and not in social media uh, in my opinion you have been warned and further i would like to see actual dates like false colors and waveform i'm not really mad about uh, shutter angle simply because here in pal area uh, it doesn't really help you for example if you're going to set your camera to 24p and the shutter angle to 1 over 80 you're going to have a horrendous flicker so uh, to get the correct shutter angle that will be something like 172.8 or something crazy like this which i don't know how many people will choose so for a pal area it's it makes more sense to use shutter speed because it's easier to set your camera to 1 over 50 if you shoot in 24p or you can shoot obviously in 25p and then you can use any shutter speed and you're going to avoid flicker but then i don't see why do i need shutter angle again this is something from cinema world and doesn't really apply uh, that great here in uh, social media environment especially not in 
uh, PAL areas. Anyway, it's a welcome update. Hopefully in the future we've seen more than that. And until next time, see you.